from me too. Uh, thanks are due to Professor uh, Karl Reber for the invitation to participate in this very interesting session, as well as to Tobias Krapp for all organization and kind care. Uh, the main ancient city-states of ancient Euboea were Halkis and Eretri in the center of the island, Karistos in the south, and Istia Oreos in the north, as we have already heard. Research of UBM sites started in the early 19th century with a number of scholarly visitors to the island, and it has continued with rich results to the modern period. Uh, as we have heard from Jan Paul Krilar, excavation at Plakari near modern Karistos in south of Euboea began in the early 21st century following previous periods of surveys, and I'm referring to Don Keller here, and test trenches by the same. The excavation was a joint project of the University of Amsterdam BU and the Greek Archaeological Service under the direction of Professor Jan Paul Krilar, the late Maria Cosma, archaeologist of the service, and other scholars. Philippe Songu's uh, work and help is invaluable in this project, of course, as well as uh, Xenia Haralampidou's uh, wonderful research. Uh, a terraced building complex, of which you have heard, came to light on the hilltop plateau with various phases and finds covering the period from the 11th to the late 4th century BC. An almost square building, building A, this is where I'm going to focus on, uh, came to light, was excavated in the north end of the complex on Terrace 2. A number of black glazed banded and plain vases of various shapes as well as lamps, were found during the excavation of this building. Most of these objects were found in a layer deep enough to correspond to the floor level of the building, and some were found near a hearth discovered in its interior, and possible hearth. The vases are in hoi, jugs, hifoi, cups, such as one handlers, top row, um, rinia uh, type, type cups, uh, second row, side, uh, and local mugs, plates, handled and handleless bowls, incense burners, this corner here, olpe, unguent containers, leaves with relief decoration, and cooking pots such as hitre and lopades. Some of the vases are local imitations of attic types, others find parallels to vases from Eretria, and a few bear affinities to Corinthian pottery types. Most of the vases and lamps are dated from the early 5th, if not earlier, to the late 4th century BC, uh, last quarter of the 4th century, uh, 325 BC, a period most probably corresponding uh, to the time Building A was in use. A number of the vases found in Building A uh, bear graffiti, often monograms or abbreviations. In this presentation, we will mainly focus on graffiti examples from Placari, and then uh, briefly comment on graffiti and short inscriptions from other sites in Euboea, mostly from the southern part of the island, with one exception. The graffito, Ita Iota, or aspirant, H-I, which is usually interpreted as Ieron or Ieros, uh, is found on a black laced cup of Rinia type, and on a handleless bowl, both of the 5th century BC, as well as on other pots and fragments from Placari. Black lace pot fragments with the graffiti Ita Iota, Ita, and Iota Epsilon were also found in the sanctuary of Apollo Dilios at Zaragis in Central Euboea, as Athena Hazidimitriou uh, already presented. The graffito, AP or uh, P alpha, I'm sorry, you have to <laughs> listen to this three times, as a bonogram, was inscribed on a small stemless cap and on a handleless bowl, both black glazed. The cup is dated from the second quarter of the, to the end of the 5th century BC, and the bowl in the same century. Since both pots were found in a sanctuary site, uh, the graffiti could probably be interpreted as an abbreviation for the word Apollo, Apollonos, Apolloni. Other types of abbreviations, such as an owner's name or other mark, can be suggested, and similar ones are known in classical contexts. If the first suggestion is right, the one uh, connecting the abbreviation to a god's name, 
then at least two of the graffiti offer an indication as to the name of the deity worshipped at the site of Placari, which would then be Apollo. Another small find from previous salvage excavation work on the south slope of Placari Hill bears the graffito Alpha Rho or Alpha Kappa, um, a fragment of a word or perhaps another abbreviation, made, however, while the clay was still soft. The ancient sources and finds testify that from the late classical to the early Roman period, Apollo and Artemis were important figures of the Caristian pantheon. Other graffiti on vases from building A at Placari belong to various categories. They can be read as numerical notations in the form of alphabetical numbers, corresponding to inventorying practices attested in sanctuary deposits, together with the more frequent attestations in the acrophonic system. The graffito Yota Alpha, on a handleless pole of the last quarter of the 5th century BC, could represent the arithmetic symbol 11. If it is a numerical notation, it could be interpreted as part of the inventoried vessels stored in the building or as a merchant's mark. Another hypothetical form of abbreviation, such as Ieron, Iota, Apollonus, Alpha, cannot be altogether excluded. The rather random, I think it's a careless sign, graffito O of a one-handled cap of the first half of the 5th century BC uh, has been interpreted elsewhere as oxivaphon, which is a rather very imaginary uh, reconstruction here, an abbreviation of content quantity, uh, describing how uh, much of a content of a liquid the container could uh, hold. Similar alphabetic and non-alphabetic graffiti, often interpreted as traders' marks, have been found on vases of the archaic and classical periods in various sites in Greece and Magna Grecia. A banded one handler of the first half of the 5th century BC bears the word Niki, victory, inscribed on its center. A stone graffito with a partly raised word Niki is known from Karistos. The short lines of two inscriptions, A, Aminitos, a friend of the city, Aminitos Tipoli Philos, and B, Savior Niki, Soter Niki, were careless, carelessly inscribed on a rock at Paleochora, and I'm sorry for the bad quality of the photograph of the rock, to the north of modern Karistos in the late 5th or in the first quarter of the 4th century BC. The rock was moved to the local museum in Karistos in the early 1970s. The inscription, apparently a political graffito in the form of one or two slogans, has been connected to a Caristian victory of the late 5th century BC, in which Aminitos, probably a Caristian citizen, pray, played a crucial role as a savior of the city. Caristians are attested to have participated in the coup of the 30 tyrants against the Athenian democracy in 411 BC. In the same year, the Euboean cities, with the exception of Oreos, revolted against the Athenian rule. The Placari Graffito could also allude to a political or military victory related to Caristos and its inhabitants. An interpretation of the Placari Graffito as an individual's victory at a religious contest cannot uh, be excluded either, and I think this is the more probable explanation. Games and contests are known from many long-lived Greek sanctuaries, and the fragmentary inscription with a religious decree of the 5th century BC from Placari mentions cult objects and animal parts, a context often connected to rivalry, contests, or hierarchy. Another perhaps stronger possibility is that the Niki Graffito refers to a victory in a sympotic context. Drinking contests and jibes, social and political jokes, how much one could drink, are attested for symposia from various sources. A Niki Graffito on a cup could probably be interpreted as an expression of a victory in a symbiotic drinking game or some form of rivalry among youths that would be typical of the competitive spirit of their age. For comparison reasons, we will now briefly overview other representative graffiti and short inscriptional evidence from Euboea. 
In the, in the late 1950s, a group of similar local black glazed and plain types of vases were found during an, an excavation. Nikolaos Mutsopoulos, late professor of architecture in the University of Thessaloniki, conducted inside and in the nearby area of the well-preserved ancient building known as the Ohi Dragon House. This uh, Dragon House is a block house, probably with many uses on the homonymous mountain of southern Euboea. Many of the pots and small objects were found stuck together, as we see in the black and white photo, near the southwest corner inside the building, and some outside. Some of the black figured pots, shirts, and loom weights from the Dragon House Apothetis bear graffiti. They provide evidence of cultic use with a possible mention to Hira. Although uh, the same graffiti uh, fragments, different fragments joined, reconstructed together, have been read in a different manner by Mutsopoulos. Other graffiti can perhaps be read as trademarks or personal names, possibly of dedicators, Pirias standing as an example. last line of this uh, shirt, tile shirt. In his time, Mutsopoulos also noted some well-known rupestral graffiti of the late classical period that denote the sacred character of a feature of, of the landscape, namely a cave in the region of Styra in southern Euboea, with the names Hermes and uh, Zeus' uh, savior, Zeps Sotir, uh, or refer to the beauty of certain youths and the female, Kali, in the second inscription. Uh, an example of a religious inscription, rather than graffito, is offered by a bronze vessel in the National Archaeological Museum. And unfortunately, provenance data are sadly missing for this. This object, the Kadiskos, or small container, was found in 1879 in Karistos, or its region. It bears the inscription Apollonos Diliu Kappa Alpha. Based on its parallels from Athens, Olympia, and Perahora, it was used for measuring quantities of liquids at the sanctuary of Apollo Dilios. Zarakes, perhaps Karistos, we'll never know, and can be dated in the 4th century BC. Uh, one final example comes from a uh, funerary context. I added it here just to show the, the extent of information a graffito could take for study purposes. Uh, among the large number of finds from the ancient cemeteries of Halkis that were excavated in the early 20th century by George Papa Vasiliou and the Archaeological Society of Athens, there is a black lace two-handled cup in Athens. It bears a graffito with a sentimental epitaph of the 4th century BC that laments the premature death of a man called Deton, for whom good things, present and future, and all the things he had hoped for, are now beyond reach. Δέτονι ατέλεστα γίνεστε τα γαθά, τα τεόντα και η τελπίση και πάντα μήχανα και άπορα αυτό πάντα τα γαθά. Uh, we may visualize the time a close relative or friend inscribed the sad lines on the small pot, a very small pot, du probably during the short period of mourning and burial or during some early funerary rite. We conclude. As a whole, the majority of black clays and plain vases from building A in Placari, an important site in view of its early historical finds as well as many of the finds with graffiti from the Ohi Dragon House, can be dated from the early 5th to the late, 5th, to the late 4th century BC. We can claim that this is the period roughly corresponding to cultic activities in building A at Placari, and also probably in the area of the Dragon House on Ohi. Wine libation and communal feasting probably con constituted one group of these activities at the site of Placari, and some similar communal feasting practice uh, or activity could perhaps be claimed for the site on top of Mount Ohi. Ritual meals held in uh, sacred sites of various Greek cities and involving groups of citizens are testified by the sources and also corroborated by finds. A number of the vases used in these sites bear meaningful graffiti, such as abbreviated declarations of the sacred hieron, 
or perhaps the deity's name, Apollo, maybe Ira. In general, the graffiti, public or private, on objects from sanctuaries and other sites are shown to connect these objects as sanctuary utensils to functions and events of their sites of provenance, such as dedication, measuring and inventorying practices, declaration of sacred property, reference to some memorable communal or private victory, inv invocation of the gods in connection to landscape features, a cave, expression of sentiment, a funerary, uh, admiration, Kali, and other. More examples of graffiti from Euban sanctuaries as well as cemeteries can be illuminating as to the range of public or private activities, individual or communal sentiments, vows and declarations this ancient practice could encompass. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. And uh, now the final uh, presentation of this morning uh, would be the Sanctuary of Artemis Samarisia in Amarintos, UBA, Greece, Excavation Results 2018 and 2019, presented uh, by Tobias Krupp. Uh, it's the results of the uh, excavations of the Swiss Archaeological School and uh, also under the name of Denny Knepfler. Uh, Thierry Doria and Samuel Verdon. Okay, um, so I have the pleasure to present you this uh, work at Amarinthos uh, Paleoclesias, an excavation uh, conducted by the Swiss School of Archaeology in Greece in collaboration with the Ephrate of Antiquities of the island of Euboea at Paleoclesias at Amarinthos, where we uh, <coughs> identified in 2017 the sanctuary of Artemis Amarisia, thanks to stamped stamped tiles of a roof, actually, of the Roman period. And it is this year that we read for the first time the toponym of Amarinthos on inscriptions from the site itself. So probably en to hiero Artemidos en Amarinthoi. At least the second half is preserved on this stone on the other side of it. Um, so the sanctuary has been identified at about 11 kilometers east of the town of Eretria. And I think about its importance, I don't have to mention much. This was known actually already before it has been found by several inscriptions and ancient sources. Uh, inscriptions mentioning, for example, Christians taking part in festivities, or of course the famous um, uh, inscriptions about the uh, Artemisia festivals found at Avlonar in second use, quite far away from the, from the site. And after all, it was a quite central place, at least in the European world, um, as there has been found an armful of stone, again, in second use uh, at the church nearby to the site. But it's certainly thanks to Denis Knepfler that the sanctuary has been found now at about 11 kilometers from Eretria, much further away than Strabo mentioned in his text, or at least the copies of Strabo mentioned, as is the hypothesis that now uh, has proven to be true by Denis Knepfler, who corrected these copies probably not Strabo's original text, but the copies of it, where there was not mentioned the uh, seven stadia, so zeta, but uh, 60 with a xi, and this would correspond exactly to the distance from Eretria to the site where the sanctuary has now been found. So um, excavation work continued in two uh, started in 2006 after geophysical survey of a larger region around uh, the Polyclesias Hill, and it was certainly uh, one of the a bit sad, but the first important moment of the excavation when, during the construction of this house in 2006, just when the first excavation started, a bit uh, like uh, 100 meters away, this marble block has been found on the construction site and has disappeared on the next day and has not yet been found. Um, and in 2007, then, not far from this house, I mean, after all, this event led us to the excavation at this uh, site, uh, this first monumental foundation of definitely a public building of late classical to early Hellenistic times, superimposed to earlier walls, has been found. And until 2018, the work has uh, progressed a lot. So you can see the first excavation in the middle of the now excavation site or the 2018 excavation site around. So with this house in the middle and after further uh, geophysical work and test trenches around the house, we decided to remove it after we bought it, 
the house in December 2018, making way now for the exploration of the central zone of the sanctuary, as I will show in this presentation today. It is thanks to, to a grant by the Swiss Confederation and, of course, the, the support of the National Science Foundation of Switzerland that we were able to not only conduct excavation work now systematically the last years, but also to buy systematically the fields and actually also plots with houses around and within the sanctuary. And now, so protecting and um, making available for excavation a site of 11,600 square meters uh, here around the central part of the sanctuary bit, uh, though even goes further beyond. So I'd like just to present to you, but uh, 15 minutes is very short for this, um, the, the, the major buildings we have excavated so far of the sanctuary, which cover a long uh, period, maybe from the geometric to, um, to the late antique or even Byzantine period. And the, the main building excavated so far and on which we concentrate, and which is also the one we first found in 2007 with this foundation, uh, is a Doric stoa from the late classical period, or the second half of the fourth century, that uh, bordered the eastern and actually even part of the northern and southern uh, limits of the sanctuary. And it was this year when we found also the corner of the southern wing, uh, enabling us now to reconstruct the building in its entirety as a P-shaped stoa with actually quite short northern and southern wings. But uh, human activity goes much further back at the site and is actually known for, uh, for the prehistoric periods on top of the Paleoclesias hill from test trenches from the f rate in the 70s and 80s. And uh, this is also the first uh, uh, traces of human activity we found in 2006 when we started excavating, when we found the Minnesalanic house which actually proves that the site, the prehistoric site, is also much larger than the hill itself. And we continue, but not focusing on this, to find prehistoric remains. For example, at the very depth of this uh, uh, stratigraphic trench linking the slopes of, this, of the hill to the interior and central part of the sanctuary, we reached layers on the sea level, on the modern sea level um, of the late Middle Bronze Age again. And now that we have the toponym of the site and we identify the sanctuary, it becomes even more probable, and a hypothesis that had already been expressed, to identify this site with Amaruto, mentioned in the Thieves Tablets, as it is also actually in East of Eretria, the main Mycenaean site so far known in the Euboean, in central Euboean plain. As soon, I mean, we did the uh, drillings all in the, in the area west of the hill and can reconstruct that actually this area was still kind of a lagoon during the Bronze Age, forming uh, a natural harbor. And as soon as this is silted up by the nearby Sarandapotamus River, we can find uh, traces of the geometric period to, uh, when people moved down to the beach or to the seaside and uh, start to build a small village now not on the top of the hill but down here. And so we find now when we slowly start to reach deeper levels within the sanctuary, we start to find geometric traces, houses, at least three of the buildings, but also tombs all over the site, actually. But it's certainly in this very central zone that we find the main traces and that have been later superimposed by, by the buildings related to the sanctuary. So you can see one of building of the 8th century um, and two further walls that have not been uh, explored in the greater uh, detail and which were then, oh, or here you can see them in a bit more detail, which were then superimposed by a huge early archaic building that we reconstructed until last year as a building with two ante um, in about the northeast southwest orientation with a long uh, central room about 24 meters long. But something that we have definitely to change after this year's campaign when we found not only a second room behind with a site entrance, but more side entrances, one just here in the last days of the excavation campaign, but also maybe uh, having so these results, we can even reconstruct a further room towards the north, making a building that has definitely the length of a, um, of a of 100 feet, maybe even more, and that's definitely much more complex that we, that than what we thought before, and uh, uh, I hope we can tell more about this in the, in the future campaigns. Um, it is then in the, in the 
mainly in the uh, classical and of course the Hellenistic periods that the sanctuary gets monumentalized. Um, so first there is a, a several buildings here appearing, so a central building here with a more or less east-west orientation, another building here oriented to this uh, central part of the sanctuary where then later the full altar of the sanctuary will be built. And then uh, mainly this in the in the very late uh, fourth century uh, phase of economic growth of Eretria in, in general, where there were many public buildings within the town itself that this big store uh, has been constructed, framing the sanctuary towards the hill. And um, a bit later, or at the same time, a further store a further store has been built, but this has not yet been excavated in detail. In the north, this is the one that has been covered with these Roman tiles, but we found this year, we found also the Hellenistic roof tiles below. So we have at least two building faces. And then uh, we have a, so the construction of this monumental platform in the center of the sanctuary and the further extension in the second century towards the hill, which are the red structures. And it's certainly the, the greatest uh, news from this year, uh, the, 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 the most important impact from this year's excavation is now uh, the, the, the trenches in the central area that after the removal of, removal of this house. And it, it is very badly preserved, but still we were able to identify one big building which is about 11 meters wide, and we do not have its length uh, so far, uh, with um, two layers of foundations preserved, but nothing above, and at least two interior columns with the east, I mean, and the building with the east west orientation and just in front of it in the east we have this big uh, platform of about five of about five by 12 meters here in a, in a closer view unfortunately there is nothing preserved on top of it of course we are really tempted and i guess this is the correct hypothesis to identify this platform in the central center of the area a platform with uh, actually two layers of foundations as we can see for a very monumental uh, structure uh, with the altar in the center of the sanctuary uh, we, we sieved all the soil and we didn't find anything of these uh, uh, of, uh, bones or uh, charcoal, but this corresponds to the, the very bad uh, state of preservation on the site itself uh, in general, where we don't have almost no layers covering the, the, late, um, I mean, the late classic to Hellenistic foundations, unfortunately. Uh, and it is in this zone that we made one of the most uh, important uh, and also enigmatic in the first a moment uh, finds just 10 centimeters from the foundations of the modern house, which was at this uh, spot uh, and which could be identified after some research with a quiver attached to a small bronze statue that we would, of course, like to identify with Artemis. A bit later, in the second century uh, BC, the, the space of the sanctuary uh, was apparently not any more big enough. I mean, we have those inscriptions mentioning processions with 3,000 hoplites, 600 uh, uh, cavalrymen, and 60 chariots coming from Eretria, uh, important military display. And uh, so we can imagine really big crowds coming to the sanctuary. And it has been further extended towards the east, maybe also as protection against the slopes of the hill with this second exedra or uh, a retaining wall at least. It has been built here, and you can actually see five layers of the wall as they collapsed with the pressure of the hill. We excavated this year the interior and below the blocks, so we couldn't find any structures or, or, um, or finds that would tell us more about the use of the space, apart one uh, John's find, let's say, uh, part of the hairs of a bronze statue that we already found last year. Certainly, the, the sanctuary was crowded by many statues, and we have the foundations of about 30 bases for bronze and marble statues and inscriptions. As you can see, they, they are crowded around all the major buildings of the site and especially before and behind the stoa. You can even see a small uh, exedra for a monument for at least the three bronze statues. But these are just the foundations for those bases. And we were lucky to find those bases um, in the last three years reused in a Roman well that has been excavated uh, after a destruction phase, probably related to the Mithridatic War, just in front of the stoa, and they were reused, so after destruction, for uh, building this well. And we are now uh, uh, cleaning those uh, bases and also refitting some from fragments. Uh, and you should, and you, as you can see, there is now almost 10 of them, and all they are dedicated to Artemidi, 
Apolloni and uh, Letoi. So they were found as in the, in the walls and in the steps, actually forming the steps of this late uh, of this uh, Roman well that has been built uh, just in between the monuments after, as I said, probably the, I mean the destruction phase making um, available all those uh, all these building material. A well that certainly served some uh, uh, cultic use as a, is attested not only by miniature vessels and uh, clay lamps, but also by about the 180 bronze coins uh, from dating from the late uh, uh, Hellenistic period, from the Euboean League, but mainly then from the Roman uh, Imperial times and mainly the Antonine period, uh, found at the bottom of the well, but also everywhere on the steps and inside the walls. So that were dedicated by, by the, the pilgrims in the sanctuary, as Posenius, for example, describes it for, a sa for the sacred well in the sanctuary of Amphiaraos at Oropos. But after this use in the third and maybe even to the fourth century AD, the sanctuary, as all the, the major sanctuaries, and especially the one also of uh, Apollo, Daphne, Foros, and Eretria, they have turned to probably a Christian site of worship. We have reused in churches blocks from an early Christian basilica that has not yet been identified. And we find, uh, so far there are just two of them, but we have four skeletons, tombs of the late antique period, with finds that are exactly the same as those that we have in the small cemetery above the sanctuary of Apollo in Eretria. But after this uh, short reuse, uh, people just start to take the blocks away from the sanctuary for building churches and probably the Byzantine village. Uh, some are even inscribed with the blocks, but we have also found two of the lime kilns in which the material was burnt and a nice find from this year, e either shot on the site or made from the material uh, of the site, uh, uh, cannon uh, ball, maybe from uh, Byzantine or Venetian times. After all, we also found the shirt with the inscri uh, incised the Venetian galley on the site. So this was really brief. Um, for, uh, for uh, many finds uh, now made in the last 10 years. Uh, we believe with this now that we can slowly understand the topography of the sanctuary. After all, we excavated more or less the eastern half of it. We do not yet have the, any propylon or entrance from the western side, certainly where it should be found uh, with a processional way towards Eretria. But uh, now we have so, the frame of the sanctuary on three sides. We have uh, this, uh, at least one, if there were several of the central buildings here, oriented east-west. Uh, that would be hard to identify definitely with something, but uh, I mean, the orientation towards this uh, um, foundation that we like to identify as the altar is quite, uh, quite clear. And uh, a small sketch that has been made just after the excavation season this year, that certainly will change over the next years, gives you an impression of this sanctuary built so on the coast of central Euboea. Uh, just one, of course, of, of many sanctuaries that were bordering, sanctuaries of Artemis that were bordering the Euboean Gulf and certainly were uh, also part of a navigational system and uh, points of reference for people, so on ships traveling up and down the Euboean Gulf. By concluding, I especially just want to thank all those people that were involved. These were many people over the last years. This year, it was about uh, a bit more than 60 uh, uh, students, workmen, specialists involved in the site, and um, without them, this would never have been possible. Thank you very much.